We have some social media questions. Paula Williams on Facebook. Did you ever ruin anything that you regret now? That's a good question. We did an episode called Adam Ruins Voting in our very first year. And in that episode, we talked about how, you know, we'd like to all think that, you know, one person, one vote, that uh, everyone's vote matters the same as everyone else's. And we talked about a lot of the reasons that isn't true. We talked about gerrymandering, how that allows politicians to choose districts, you know, choose who wins before the voters do. We talked about voter disenfranchisement, um, et cetera. And those segments are all pretty negative, right? And then at the end, we said, hey, but at the end of the day, you still must vote because voting is how we have fixed these problems in the past, right? In fact, in Michigan just now, they, they voted for a proposition that ended gerrymandering, right? But the problem is the end didn't go on YouTube. The part that went on YouTube was just the middle, was the downer part. And so a lot of people watched that segment and they thought, yeah, Adam's right, I'm not gonna vote. And we said, no, that wasn't our message. So that was our very first year doing the show. We learned a little bit about how when we have a message that's that negative, we have to put the positive takeaway in the YouTube video so you don't miss it. Chili McCool on Twitter, why do people hate finding out what they believe is wrong? Why do people hate finding out what they think is wrong? I mean, it's. It's natural, it's part of human nature to dislike uh, being proved wrong. And in fact, we, we have a whole uh, segment about this in an episode called Emily Ruins, Adam Ruins Everything uh, about the backfire effect. The backfire effect is an effect where when people uh, are told something that disagrees with what they think and they're given strong evidence against it, they'll actually, they'll feel so attacked that they'll actually beef up their defenses and believe their original wrong belief even more, right? Um, but uh, we have come up with a couple techniques on our show that help us get past that and help us actually change minds of people who watch the show. And at the end of the day, when you're actually convinced, it feels good to find out that you were wrong because you realize, oh, I know more about the world now. Sean Wickham on Twitter. Which episode has challenged your personal beliefs the most? Um, well, there was the one I spoke about earlier about the placebo effect. That was, yeah. that was really surprising to me. Um, I also, we're, we have an episode coming out later this year about uh, the Olympics um, and how bad the Olympics are for athletes, how bad they are for the host cities, how much of a big, you know, money, almost money laundering operation it is. Um, and I love the Olympics. I love watching the Olympics. Uh, it's my favorite sporting event. It's like so inspiring and, and you get to see all these incredible athletes. Um, and so that was a hard episode yeah. for me to do. Keaton Fribble on it's Twitter. When is the episode about the antique business coming? You know, I don't know anything about the antique business. Kate, Caitlin, she should needs to tweet out some follow-ups. Keaton Fribble, okay. Yeah, she needs ben, to tweet some follow-ups. Let us know what the scams are with the antiques business. I don't know much about it. Benny Corey on Twitter. Have you ever been in trouble with the government or any organization for ruining things they want us <laughs> to believe? The Secret Service shows up my house once a week and says, you gotta stop ruining things. And I say, there's a First Amendment. No, no, it's, we've never gotten any trouble with the government. Um, occasionally, a company will get a little cranky at us for, for uncovering their secrets. But the fact is that, uh, you know, like for instance, Luxottica, the glasses manufacturer that owns almost every glasses brand and that, you know, rampantly overcharges people for, you know, glasses purchases for a medical necessity such as glasses. Um, you know, they, they, they got a little cranky at us, but at the end of the day, everything that we do on our show is, is, you know, thoroughly sourced and cited, and it's all material that has been covered by newspapers, by journalists. You know, the Luxottica story, 60 Minutes did it a year before we did, right? We did it with more comedy, we made it funnier, you know, but we cited 60 Minutes. And so Luxottica can't get that mad because, hey, this stuff is out there, it's a matter of public record. Natasha Jaliba on Twitter. You went from YouTube to your own TV show. What do you want to do next? Oh man, I just want to keep doing our show in the biggest, best way that we can. I'm always looking to push ourselves. How can we go bigger? How can we do more shocking, more shocking truths? You know, um, I'm working on right now, uh, working on live performance, and I'm combining stand-up with the informational comedy even more, and taking that on the road. I'd love to do an hour special of, of the new show I'm working on. I'm working on a, on a brand new show called Mind Parasites that I'm really excited about uh, that uh, we'll be taking on the road soon. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.